sacrificial beacon up. Give an account of thy stewardship, for now thou canst be steward no longer. My wife, when asked who converted her to Catholicism, always answers, the devil. G.K. Chesterton. It is not by chance that Satan is called something in Greek with the double meaning of liar and accuser. Satan lies because he hates the truth, that is, God in his essence. He lies because if he were to tell the truth, he would reveal his own deceptions. He lies because only by lying can he also be the accuser of our brothers. He who day and night accuses them before our God. And just as the most blessed virgin, the tabernacle of the incarnate word, is advocata nostra, so Satan is our accuser and the one who inspires false testimony against the just. The revolution, which is overturning of the divine cosmos in order to establish infernal chaos, having no arguments to discredit the Church of Christ and the Christian society that has been inspired and guided by her down the centuries, resorts to slander and the manipulation of reality. Cancel culture is nothing other than the attempt to put the Chifitis Dei, that's the city of God, on trial in order to condemn her without proof, imposing the Chiviticus de Diaboli, the Chivitas Diaboli, the city of the devil, as its counterpart of alleged liberty, equality, and fraternity. In order to do this, as is evident, it prevents the masses from having a knowledge of the truth because its deception is based on ignorance and bad faith. This premise is necessary in order to understand the gravity of the behavior of the one who usurps the vicarious power deriving from the supreme authority of the church to slander and accuse her before the world in a grotesque parody of Christ's trial before the Sanhedrin and Pilate. On that occasion, also the civil authority listened to the false accusations made against our Lord, and although recognizing his innocence, had him scourged and crowned with thorns in order to please the people who were stirred up by the high priests and the scribes, and then sent him to death crucifying him, the most humiliating of inflictions. The members of the Sanhedrin thus misused their spiritual authority, as the prefect of Judea misused his civil authority. The same farce has been repeated throughout history thousands and thousands of times, because hiding behind every lie, behind every unfounded accusation against Christ and against his mystical body, which is the church, is the devil, the liar, the accuser. And it is evident beyond any reasonable doubt that this satanic action is inspiring the events reported in the press in the last few days, from the perfidious mea culpa of Bergoglio for the alleged sins of the Catholic Church committed in Canada against the uh, native locals, to his participation in pagan rites and infernal ceremonies of invocation of the dead. Regarding the faults of the Jesuit missionaries, I think Correspondenza Romana, linked here, has answered exhaustively enumerating the crimes to which the martyrs of Canada were subjected at the hands of the locals. The same applies to the alleged accusations rel relating to the schools in question that the state had entrusted to the Catholic Church and the Anglicans in order to bring the faith to the local people and favor the assimilation of Christian culture of the country. We thus discover that the Oblates of Mary Immaculate were the only defenders of the traditional language and the way of life of the locals in question, unlike the government and the Anglican Church, which insisted on an integration that uprooted the local people from their origins. We also learn that the alleged, culture, the alleged cultural uh, G word of the local people in question that the Commission de Veritate et Reconciliacion had to deal with in 2008 was then transformed without any basis of truth or probability into physical G word, thanks to an absolutely false media campaign that was supported by Canada's Weasley Caesar and a pupil of Satan Claus and a notorious proponent of the uh, of uh, the larger integration and the, the program behind it. But if the truth has been officially recognized by experts and nonpartisan historians, nevertheless the cultus of lies has continued its inexorable process, culminating in the official apologies of the head of the church, demanded by the Weasley Caesar of Canada and immediately made by his own Bergoglio who could not wait to humiliate once again the institution he unworthily represents. In their eagerness to indulge the official narrative and please their masters, Weasley, Caesar, and Bergoglio consider as a negligible detail the total non-existence of evidence about the phantom main claim on a large scale of burials in which hundreds of the most vulnerable were supposedly secretly interred. This ought to be enough to demonstrate their bad faith and the pretentiousness of their accusations and mea culpa. Also because the press regime demands the heads of the enemies of the people with summary trials, but is careful not to rehabilitate the innocent people who are falsely accused. The purpose of this 
filthy operation is all too obvious. To discredit the past of the Catholic Church as being guilty of the worst things in order to legitimize her present persecution, both by the state and by the hierarchy itself, because that church, the intolerant, rigid Catholic Church, which preached the gospel to all peoples and which allowed its missionaries to be martyred by those immersed in, the bar in ancient barbarity, must no longer be allowed to exist. Must not proselytize a solemn nonsense, a various sin serious sin against ecumenism, to quote Bergoglio, as she must not claim to have any truth to teach the nations for the salvation of souls. And Bergoglio wants us to know that he has nothing to do with that church, just as he detests the doctrines, morality, and liturgy of that church. To the point of mercilessly persecuting the many faithful who have not yet resigned themselves to following him toward the abyss of apostasy, and who would like to honor God with the apostolic mass. Not that anyone has ever thought that Jorge Mario can in any way be Catholic, Every expression, every gesture, every movement he makes betrays such impatience for that which even remotely recalls our Lord, that by now his attestations of irreligiosity and sacrilegious impiety are superfluous. Seeing him impassively watch the satanic rites of education of the dead performed by a shaman unbelievably worsens the scandal of having rendered idolatrous worship to the infernal Pacamama in the Vatican Basilica, thereby desecrating it directly above the burial place of the Prince of the Apostles. Asking forgiveness for the non-existent sins of the missionaries is a despicable and sacrilegious act of submission to the <clears throat> Novus Ordo Seclorum that finds perfect correspondence in the complicit silences and scandalous protections for which Bergoglio is responsible toward, towards the true victims of his protégés. We may hear him ask for forgiveness in the Middle Kingdom, in Africa, and among the icebergs of Antarctica, but he will never hear him pronounce a mea culpa for those things committed in Argentina, for the horrors of the lavender group of McCarrick and his accomplices, and those whom he promoted as his collaborators. We will never hear him make credible apologies for having lent himself to, this, to be the celebratory endorser of the um, 2020 solution, which today we know is the cause of a terrifying number of, shall we say, problems. We will never, he will never beat his breast for these sins. Indeed, he is proud of them, and knows that a gesture of sincere repentance would not be appreciated by his principal supporters no less guilty than him. So here we are, standing before the liar, the accuser. Here we are before the ruthless persecutor of the good clergy and faithful, both of yesterday and today, the zealous ally of the enemies of Christ and of the church, the fierce opponent of the Catholic Mass, who is an ecumenical participant in satanic rites and pagan ceremonies, a man divided in soul by his dual role as head of the sect that occupies the Vatican and as an inquisitor of the Catholic Church. At his side, in his squalid performance, is his altar boy... Weasley Caesar of Canada, who propagates the nouveau uh, reality rejecting doctrine and associated first deadly sin ideology in the name of inclusiveness and freedom, but who did not hesitate for a moment to repress in blood the just and legitimate revolts of the Canadian people, which was deprived of its fundamental rights at the excuse of the 2020 problem. They make a nice couple, without a doubt, but both have been sponsored in their careers by the would-be Caesars of the world in their anti-Christ uh, program. Both have been placed at the head of an institution with the task of demolishing it and dispersing its members. Both are betrayers, betrayers of their role, of justice, and of truth. These summary trials may perhaps be appreciated by contemporaries in bad faith or in ignorance, but they do not withstand the judgment of history, much less the unappealable judgment of God. The day will come when we will be called to render an account of his administration, Give an account of thy stewardship, for now thou canst be steward no longer. See the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, verse 2. Says the Master in the parable of yesterday's Gospel, Until that moment, as baptized and living members of the mystical body, let us pray and do penance, in order to remove from us the punishments that these scandals call down upon the church and the world. Let us invoke the intercession of the martyrs of Canada, who have been outraged by the accuser who is seated on the throne of Peter, so that they may obtain from the throne of God the liberation of the church and the present scourge. Signed, Carla Maria Vigano, Archbishop, 1st of August, 2022. And there you have it. He doesn't hold back. My apologies for the bad Latin. Something deeply ironic about a Latin mass advocate like myself who can barely pronounce Latin words. I understand that. And uh, my apologies for the clumsy substitution of words, but it just can't be helped. Um, I'll have this link to today 
in the show notes at return to tradition.org. That's the name of this podcast with a .org at the end, so you can read it for yourself. Just look for today's post, and you'll find it there. I'm curious what you think about this. He goes into more detail than I did in my own just dismissing of the official narrative coming out of Canada. Then, you know, he did, he goes into a lot of it saying it wasn't the church, it was the state. It was the Anglican church, but it wasn't the Catholic church. I know some of you don't agree with that. Well, you should look into his claims. Um, again, if you go to the, if you actually go to the life site article, they have linked in there the actual report that he references. So go take a look at it for yourself so you can see his claim. Don't take anybody in the church's word at face value, especially not mine, please. But don't take anybody's word on this at face value. Go look into things yourself.